welcome. Thanks for joining me. Well, let's discuss indexing on a metal lathe. Uh, why would you want to index? Now, let me show you why. This is a tool post drill I made several years ago. Uh, I made a video on it and I'll put the link underneath this video in the description area. It's useful for drilling in the side of stock like this if you need regularly spaced holes like three around or four around. Uh, you can drill in the side of stock like that. And then if you want to drill in the end, you can put this tool post back on the uh, compound like it normally is and drill this direction into the end. So, you know, if I want ten holes around that, five holes, four holes, three holes, whatever, I need some way to index this spindle in the appropriate, in the appropriate spot. Uh, here's an example of something you might want to index. I put three holes in this uh, die, uh, die holder for uh, threading on the lathe, but, but one there, one there, and one there. And I used the lathe and the indexing for doing that. Uh, you can also mount this on the compound and drill in the end of, end of the uh, stock. Now here's something I came up with several years ago. Uh, it fits my Logan lathe. This uh, South Bend lathe has got a, a bigger bore so it doesn't work on there. But it's got a uh, hundred, it's got 48, uh, it's got a lot of different combinations. Uh, it's really it's overkill, I never use a hundred. Uh, most of what I use is two, three, four, that's about it really. Uh, what I'm going to do, what we're going to do today, and what I'm going to do on this lathe, so I got this 48 tooth gear. Uh, that'll give me two, four, uh, two, three, four, six, eight, twelve, uh, forty-eight, and, and whatever. Gives me plenty of combinations. Uh, this is a seven-eight spindle bore. Happens to fit really good, and that just happens to be what this gear is. You could use change gears. Any. Any uh, 48 tooth gear doesn't have to be that big. That's really overkill. I just got a good deal on it. Uh, here's a 24 tooth. You could get just about all the same combinations with it. Uh, having a gear that small, the resolution is not as uh, not quite as good, but that would probably probably do just as well. So the first step in doing this is to make the expanding arbor or mandrel. It's got a cone here and this expands inside the spindle. Uh, I'm going to make it just a little bit more simple than I did this one and I think it'll work just fine. Okay, that's 5 sixteenths, which is the draw bolt size. Okay, I got a hole in there that's 5 eighths of an inch deep, I mean uh, 5 eighths in diameter and about 2 and a half inches deep, which I think is going to be plenty deep. I've got a boring bar in here and my compound set at 70 degrees and I'm going to uh, cut a taper in there for that wedge and then I'll cut bandsaw cuts in the uh, circumference of that to let it expand. Uh, 70 degrees, uh, I don't know why I chose that, it looks about right. Uh, but I'll cut the wedge at the same angle. Uh, this will do another thing too, it will straighten out that crooked bore and it, it goes back down to 5 sixteenths, like 2 or 3 inches in there, 2 and a half inches, so it shouldn't affect the con concentricity, concentricity, whatever, in the bore. Take it out of back here. Yeah, I probably need to lock my carriage. Yeah, 
that's going to look good. See where I'm cutting that bevel is perfectly concentric now. Now I'm cutting that wedge. Okay, I'd say that's good enough. Now I need to bore and tap this for 5 sixteenths. Okay, the gears on the uh, expanding mandrel it goes in there like that. Tighten this. A little bit of a wobble. We'll address that in a minute. Okay, I need to grind a point on this pin here, retractable pin, so that it is a little bit more blunt than the V between these gear teeth. That's a good way to do it if you ever have to grind a point. Chuck in your drill. Boy, that's perfect. Okay, this thing works really good. Locks down firmly with hardly any effort. Breaks loose easy. Uh, but I got a problem. It's got... Uh, Got a wobble to it. And the reason for that is that it's loose fitting and it only expands at the end. So really what I need to do, and I put a piece of tape around that and that helped it a lot. What I should have done is only cut the slots that deep and put a knurl right there. Ideally if you make one of these Turn, turn.
turn a piece of larger stock to be a really good fit in your spindle and you won't have this problem. But I'm going to run a knurl right there and try try to expand that. Uh, I'm going to run the knurl over the top of my bandsaw cut which I don't know if that's going to work out real well. It may make an ugly knurl but it might be enough to expand that shaft to where it's, where it's more stable in the spindle. So we're going to give that a try. Okay, let's give this a try. That's a good deep neural. Okay, let's give this a try. Oh, I think I like that. We'll see if Oh, look at that. That worked great. Okay, here's how this thing goes together. Every lathe will be different. This lathe, if you got a south bend with uh, sleeve bearings on the spindle, this will probably, probably work. Depends on how your lathe is made. couple of all thread bolts a couple of spacers I made those spacers out of uh, eighth inch uh, or quarter inch quarter inch water pipe piece of metal going across the top there And there's the pin that we sharpened earlier. I like it. Looks good. What I'm going to have to do is I've been thinking about this for a while. I need to put some like uh, for four position put a white dot. For three position put a red dot. Uh, two position black dot. And what I think I'll do is I'll probably drill a little slight hole there like with a 3 16 drill or something so that it doesn't so the paint doesn't wipe off okay I divided it into four and six and if I need a three hole pattern I'll just skip one of the uh, six marks so I'm going to drill these marks now I ended up using Sharpie for the black. I don't know what's wrong with my paint pen. This is red for the six. That's working good. There we go. I'll just stick that in the lathe and take some uh, emery cloth and clean off the surface. Well, there it is finished. Got it all cleaned up. If I want to uh, drill a four hole pattern, I hit every black hole like that. Second hole, third hole. If I want to drill a three hole pattern, put it in the red, drill one there. If I want three hole, I skip one red. Skip one again, that's three hole. 
If I want to uh, drill a six hole pattern, I hit every red hole. It's pretty good. I like it. That about wraps it up, and thanks for joining me.